Remember, we talk about Henry's law. Henry's law says solubility of a gas in a liquid depends on the pressure of the liquid above the gas. So what you see here on the left-hand side, a can of coke, there is carbon dioxide dissolved in the coke, and the pressure of carbon dioxide above the can, inside the can is two atmosphere. And then when we open the can and suppose outside atmospheric pressure is one ATM, what you're going to see, some of the carbon dioxide are coming out because the pressure is going to be equilibrated with outside temperature, uh, outside pressure. So the solubility of carbon dioxide is much lower in coke than solubi solubility of carbon dioxide at a pressure of two atmosphere. So as we decrease the, out the pressure of the gas above a liquid, look at number of the blue dots, number of blue dots, which shows carbon dioxide dissolved in coke is decreasing. So this is another example to show the validity of uh, Henry's law. On the left-hand side, we have certain pressure above this liquid. At some point, the system is at equilibrium. That means some of the gases are escaping from the liquid to the surface of the liquid. Some of them are going back. You see two of them are getting out. Two of the gas molecules are getting in. So we have reached an equilibrium with this pressure. If we increase the pressure, do you see one, two, three, and four molecules of gases are now dissolving. <clears throat> one is coming out. That means when the system comes to an equilibrium, if you count number of the red dots before increasing the pressure, and after increasing the pressure, you see there are more carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide are the red dots, which are dissolved in the solution. So again, a validation of Henry's law. If you increase the pressure of a gas above surface of a liquid, the solubility of the gas inside the liquid is going to be increased. So now, guys, if we make a solution, let's say you take sodium chloride and dissolve it in water, you can place half a teaspoon of sodium chloride in a cup of water, stir it, it dissolves, or you can place a whole teaspoon, two teaspoons, three teaspoons. As you increase the amount of the solute, Sodium chloride is solute, water is solvent. As you increase the amount of solute, property of this solution is going to change. So in order to show relate properties to the amount of the dissolved solute, we have to use the term concentration. So we can have many solutions of sodium chloride in water. They can have different properties. So we need to specify how much sodium chloride we have per unit of the solution. So we have to express concentration because different concentrations of solute in a solvent produce different properties. So what are the units of concentration that we are going to use? Generally, these are called volumetric flask in the lab. This is a 250 ml volumetric flask. And if I want to make a solution, I have to know how much of the solid that I need. You weigh the solid and you add enough water to dilute the solution. There is a label here which shows exactly 50 ml. You make a solution with no concentration. For example, in this case, we are making a 2% mass per volume which means two grams of sodium chloride divided by the volume of 250 ml. So now we are expressing, when we say 2%, you're expressing the concentration. 
So can I say one way of expressing concentration of solution is showing percentage. And another way that you are more familiar with from chapter six is the fact that you use molarity. Do you remember mole is the unit of showing amount in chemistry? That's what we use in our calculation. So we have another way of showing concentration and that's molarity. Now, what is molarity? It's number of moles of solute and you know how to convert grams to moles or moles to grams divided by liter of solution. So if I say mole per liter, I have expressed molarity. That means how much solute you have in a given volume of solution. For example, if I say a particular hydrochloric, uh, hydrochloric acid solution is 2.0 mole, it simply means that, I'm sorry, 2.0 molar, molar. Capital M is used for molar, molarity. If I say 2.0 molarity, it means there are two moles of hydrochloric acid in every one liter of solution. Or if I say a six molar solution of hydrochloric acid, it means inside this solution, inside one liter of this solution, you have six moles of hydrochloric acid or there are six moles per liter. So that's one way we can express molarity. We show it with capital M. If you see a solution of sodium chloride, which says two molar, it means you have two moles of sodium chloride in one liter of that solution. Or if you see a six molar hydrochloric acid, it means in every liter of that solution, you have six moles of hydrochloric acid. So let's do a problem. That is what you are going to see on our next video for our next lab. We make a solution. We give you the amount of the solid that we are adding. <clears throat> we give you the volume of the flask and we ask you to calculate the molarity. So in this solution, we are going to make a 1.0 molar solution of sodium chloride. And this is by weighing 58 and half grams of sodium chloride. Now, what is molar mass of sodium chloride? Na is 23 grams per mole. If you look up the periodic table, Cl is 35 and half gram per mole. You add them together, you get 58 and half gram. That's mass of one mole. So that's, you weigh one mole. You weigh 58 and half grams of sodium chloride. And then you pour the solid in a flask. This is a one liter volumetric flask. Then you add a little bit of water, dissolve it, add more water to dissolve it. So you leave room for there is a spark, enough space to shake the flask. Once the solution, once the solid is dissolved in the solvent, then you are going to add more water to the label of the flask, which is exactly 1.0 <clears throat> liter. So this is a one molar sodium chloride. So essentially making a solution with a given molarity is simply calculate how much solid you need. Yeah. Weigh the solid on a balance, add it to a volumetric flask, and then add several portions of water enough to dilute it to total volume. That's how you make a solution with given molarity. By the way, these are flasks, volumetric flasks. Also, I wanna show you the picture of a graduate cylinder. This is a graduate cylinder. They're both used for measuring the volume, except volumetric flasks are more accurate. They give you better result than a graduate cylinder. I also wanted to show you volume of one milliliter of liquid. So 
This is, let's see, this looks like there is two milliliters in here. So one milliliter is half of this. <clears throat> yeah, this is two milliliter. So one milliliter, depending on the dropper, it could be the size of the outlet of a dropper. One milliliter of a liquid is between 10 to 20 drops based on the size of the dropper. It's not a whole lot of liquid. 